Guys, I'm so excited because today is new guitar day. Every musician's favorite day. Come along with me as I take a look at my new acts and we'll talk about what you should be doing anytime you add a new guitar to your lineup. Stick around. Hello, the internet. This is Adam from Miller's Custom Guitars. My dad and his gear have been featured on this channel a number of times. A couple years ago, my dad discovered some of the great value that you can get through purchasing Harley Benton instruments through Tommen. So far, he's purchased a T-style guitar and a PRS style guitar through Harley Benton and he's been really happy with those guitars and I've taken a look at both of those guitars already on this channel in my what I found at Papa's house series. I'll put a link uh, to that playlist in the show notes. Well, apparently my dad liked those guitars so much that he felt like I should have one too. And for my most recent birthday, he gifted me a Harley Benton Les Paul style guitar. I was amazed and shocked, as you can imagine. This was a complete shocker for me and fills a hole in my guitar arsenal. However, it also gives us an opportunity here on the channel to talk about what all of us should be doing whenever we add a new guitar to our lineup. Uh, whether it's a brand new guitar like the one we're to be talking about today, or it's a used guitar like this Honer that we featured recently, which I bought used from a guitar store, or even if it's something that you built or assembled yourself like we did on this channel with my Strat uh, kit build uh, that you see here. After this video, you'll have a better understanding of how to approach your new guitar. But first, let's take a look at the guitar. And <laughs> boy, is she a beauty. Now, this is the Harley Benton SC uh, 552. Uh, SC, I think, stands for single cut. And it's in uh, the amazing Desert Flame Burst. This guitar is Harley Benton's take on their Les Paul style single cut design. And hey, let's take a look at the features. If you care about the wood species that they used, and I do care about that kind of thing, the wood and neck are made from Maranti, uh, just like my dad's PRS style guitar. And uh, that is sometimes called Philippine Mahogany. The fretboard is Pal Ferro, which I like, but the real showstopper is the body, which features a gorgeous flamed maple veneer top, which they have finished in this ridiculously beautiful burst. This guitar is definitely an eye catcher. As far as the technical specs, the guitar features dual Alnico 5 humbuckers, a graphite nut, a 12 inch radius, and 22 stainless steel frets. That's right, stainless steel. This guitar also features some great additional features like a contoured heel joint for easy access to the higher frets, high quality tuners, and tunomatic bridge. For all of those features, they sell these for only about 270 bucks plus shipping. So this guitar is a lot of bang for the buck, and it's definitely a head turner. So let's plug right in and tear it up! Right? Well, not exactly. At least not for me. And well, it shouldn't be for you either. But heck, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't plug this thing in right away and jam for a bit when I brought it home, of course. But honestly, it always kind of grinds my gears when gear reviewers online just take the guitar out of the box and just start wailing away without adjusting the guitar at all. To me, this may show how it comes out of the box, but it's an unrealistic portrayal of how a guitar owner should be approaching a new guitar. I would not feel comfortable taking this guitar to a gig as it currently sits out of the box. 
Why not? Well, because this guitar, as it currently sits, well, <laughs> it's someone else's guitar. <laughs> when you first acquire a guitar, that guitar has spent its entire existence literally belonging to someone else. Whether that was the manufacturer or the store owner or the previous owner, if you purchased it used. But now it's time for this guitar to become your guitar. Now, I don't know about you, but I have preferences on my guitars about how I like them set up, how I like them to play and perform, and how I like them to sound. And honestly, you should too. So we're gonna give this guitar a once over and then make some decisions on whether we like it how it is or if some things need to change. The first thing we're gonna check on this guitar is the setup, <laughs> of course. I, I'm always going on about the setup because it's the most important part on any guitar. Now, when I inspected the action on this guitar, I discovered that it's way too high, especially on the treble strings. The next thing that I think about is the string gauge. Now, these guitars come with a 10 to 46 string gauge, which is very common. But my personal preference on Gibson scale length guitars is to use 11s. Now, once again, that's a preference thing. The next thing you should do when you get a new instrument is to inspect the wiring and the electronics. Now this guitar has standard modern Gibson style wiring with two volume pots and two tone pots. This configuration isn't my favorite setup, so I will want to take a look and see if there isn't perhaps a different or better way that I would maybe want to run the controls. In most cases, you're likely going to want to keep the electronics how they came and you're mainly just going to want to look for loose wires or faulty ground joints or maybe a bad jack. But for me, I will definitely be looking for a creative wiring scheme. The last thing I always want to take a look at is the pickups and the hardware. Now look, if you just paid, I don't know, 5,500 bucks for, I don't know, like a custom shop guitar, you're probably going to leave the pickups that came in the guitar. <laughs> Heck, even a lot of mid-priced guitars like my Gretsch Electromatic Jet and my Epiphone ES-335, a lot of times those come with pickups that sound amazing, and both of those guitars sure do. But in many cases, finding the right pickups for your specific preferences can help take a good guitar and push it over the top to turn it into a guitar that does everything that you are asking it to do. Now, on this guitar, I put the stock pickups through the paces, both directly into the amp and also through my pedal board. I even took this guitar to church on a Sunday and played through the service with it, running it through my Strymon Iridium. My verdict is that the tone of these pickups is very, I don't know, underwhelming. The neck pickup is... Uh, almost unusably dark and muddy. And the bridge pickup, while better, in my opinion, it just lacks personality. Now, this guitar is gonna be knocking other guitars out of the rotation. It has to inspire me tonally and not just aesthetically. So I am definitely gonna wanna do something about the pickups. Now look, even if you don't swap out the pickups, when you get a new guitar, you're probably going to want to make sure that the pickups are set properly, especially once you've got your uh, setup dialed in. Making sure that the pickup height is right will ensure that the pickup volume is balanced between pickups, which is super important. Not to mention, it's, I don't know, pretty easy to do, and it just takes a minute. Lastly, there's the hardware. You'll want to check the hardware to make sure everything is working as it should. Are the tuners functioning properly? If it's got a tremolo, is it set the way that you like it? Take a look at my favorite mods video for ideas on how to set strat tremolos. Are the things that are supposed to be tight, tight? Are the things that are supposed to be moving, moving freely? <laughs> In this case, Harley Benton did a really good job with the hardware, with the small exception that it's a little 
boring. I don't know. They made a straightforward Les Paul style guitar. And if I'm being honest, that's never really been my thing. I don't know. I'm more of a Strat and Telly man myself. <laughs> Look, we're going to keep that and everything else that I just mentioned in mind as we're making our decisions moving forward. So having laid the groundwork of how I plan to approach this guitar, well, let's dive in. So when I was giving this guitar once over, I noticed several areas that jumped out to me as needing attention. As I mentioned earlier, this setup was not great, and I'm gonna wanna get that sorted out. I'm also gonna wanna go up to 11 gauge strings, and I'm gonna wanna put a set of my favorite brand strings, which are String Joys. And because I have a number of different guitars that I reach for when I play electric, I need strings that are going to last a long time, and that is why I'm going to go for a set of String Joy coated strings, which are the Orbiters um, 11 to 50 balance tension set. Now this isn't sponsored, I just like them a lot. Um, I've never tried the Orbiter uh, coated strings before, uh, and I am looking forward to trying them. I've heard good things. As far as hardware goes, I'm actually mostly happy with this guitar with one small exception, like I mentioned earlier. I have the same tuners um, on my ES-335 and I've had no complaints. And the Tunomatic Bridge and Stop Tailpiece is a classic choice for this guitar, or at least it would be if I didn't find them so boring, like I mentioned. You see, I've become a tremolo person. See, look, <laughs> and I feel really restricted when I find myself playing a guitar that doesn't have a tremolo. This would actually be a perfect guitar to add that Duesenberg Less Trim 2 that I've featured on a number of guitars, and I've actually had that kicking around the shop for a couple of years. If I hadn't decided to sell it off recently. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to buy one of those budget knockoff less trims that you see on Amazon. <laughs> I mean, this is a budget guitar after all. It kind of is a good fit. So I did. I bought the Geiker Tunomatic style electric guitar bridge <laughs> from Amazon. It's a knockoff of the less trim and it's about a third the price. Um, I also looked through my own inventory of parts and I found an old roller saddle that I can also install. I'm going to put both of those on this guitar. Now, as far as pickups go, I feel like my ES-335 kind of has me covered as far as my humbucker sounds go. So I kind of wanted to something a little different with this guitar. Making the decision to put a Duesenberg style tremolo on this guitar has me wanting to draw even more inspiration from Duesenberg guitars, at least when it comes to the pickups, especially their star player. Originally, I was thinking of putting a humbucker sized P90 or maybe a gold foil in the neck, but I recently dismantled and parted out a parts Telecaster, which left me with a guitar fetish Surf 90 pickup, which it's their take on the Dynasonic pickup. Now, I've always liked this pickup, even though it was kind of an affordable pickup. I think I'll drop that into the neck position for fat single coil style tones. It's definitely gonna be an upgrade from the dark muddy tones that this guitar had. Now for the bridge pickup, I feel like this might be the one place where I might be justified in splurging a little bit on this guitar. The bridge pickup, it's my favorite pickup and most used pickup. And if I put something in there that's really special, it'll go a long way to making this guitar a real winner. Now I consider a lot of different options, including a low wind PAF style humbucker or a P90 or even just a fat single. However, in the end, I decided to order the bird humbucker uh, from Lawler Pickups. Now this pickup is their take on a Firebird mini humbucker pickup, but in a full size humbucker case. I ordered one directly from Lawler and I think it will help make this guitar unique from all of my other guitars. And if it's unique, that means that it's gonna wanna get played. <laughs> Last of all is the electronics. 
I think one thing I'd like to do on this guitar is to try 50s style wiring rather than modern wiring. I'll link to a pretty thorough blog article on the Seymour Duncan website that talks all about it if you want to read that. But the main difference is that with the 50 style wiring, you actually retain more high end on your guitar as you turn down the volume pot. Now, I don't use volume pots on my guitars very much because I feel like when I do, you just lose too much treble. At the same time, I haven't cared for the treble bleed mod when I've tried that in the past. Maybe if I try this wiring, it'll actually encourage me to use the volume pots more. Who knows? I've never tried this before and I'm looking forward to giving it a whirl. So with all of those decisions being made, it's finally time to actually start the work on this guitar. Let's tuck into it. I started with the electronics first. I uninstalled the old pickups and then carefully installed the replacement pickups. I took special care while installing the pickups to update the wiring to 50 style wiring following the diagram. Uh, I didn't need to change the pots since both pickups sound best with 500k pots. And that was nice as this guitar already came with full sized alpha pots. I was a little worried that the pickups might have phase issues, which is why I ordered the Lawler pickup as a four lead pickup so that I could easily swap the phase um, if that was an issue. And actually it did turn out to be a problem and I just quickly unsoldered the pickup swapped the uh, the leads and resoldered it and that solved that problem. Both pickups went in without much of a problem and I'm gonna set the final pickup height as part of my final setup. Next up was the hardware. This actually was very simple. The Geiger tremolo installed directly into the holes that the stop tailpiece had been mounted into. The roller bridge was a little trickier since I needed to replace the support screws, but that was easy enough since all of the threads that I replaced were all metric and they dropped right in. I eyeballed the height on the bridge for now um, and I figured I would finalize that during the setup. One problem that I noticed while playing this guitar before was that it had massive tuning stability problems. Now while doing the setup, especially uh, with higher gauge strings, I'm gonna make sure to be, that I'm paying special attention to the nut um, in, in order to make sure that the nut slots are wide enough uh, to allow the strings to move freely. So I strung up the guitar with those new strings and then I proceeded with the setup following the train method of setup that we talk about on this channel all the time. I tuned up, that's my T, I checked and set the relief, that's my R, uh, and then I checked and adjusted the that's my A, uh, as necessary, first at the nut and then at the 12 fret. Actually, the nut was high. I had to lower that and widen the, the nut slots. And then I set the action at the 12th fret using the saddle adjustment on the roller saddle. Lastly, I adjusted the I intonation uh, for each set string on the saddle. Well, not lastly, because the very last step is to noodle, that's your end, on the guitar and make sure that everything checks out. You're looking for fret buzz, high frets, you're looking for anything out of whack. If all of that is working for me, then we're gonna finalize our pickup height. When setting pickup height, I like to use Seymour Duncan's recommendation of 3.30 seconds of an inch as a starting point and adjust from there. The way I like to do it is to use an Allen wrench. I just set it right on top of the pickup and I push the string down on the highest fret and I turn the screw until the Allen key touches the, uh, touches the, the string. I do that on the low E and the high E and that's how I set it. After that, um, I close up the back and finally we have that rocking guitar that I hoped it would have been when I originally unboxed it. Now look, obviously you're not gonna also soup up every new guitar you get, but you should definitely take the time to peek under the hood whenever you get a new guitar. Take off the pit guard or the control cover and inspect the wiring. Put the brand and gauge of strings that you like on there and have it set up to play the way that you like it. Make sure that the pickups are set correctly. Heck, if you got it used or it's been sitting in a guitar store for a while, maybe clean the dang thing. <laughs> Doing these steps, I was able to take this pretty cool guitar and transform it into 
this really awesome guitar that begs to be played. <laughs> this LP style guitar now has super low action, super smooth tremolo system, great tuning stability, and tone that is completely different from any of my other guitars. Guys, when I was playing it, I was sitting there thinking, this does not sound like anything else that I have. But you might be sitting there asking yourself, is it even worth spending more on upgrades for a guitar than we did on the guitar? <laughs> I mean, all in all, I spent over 300 bucks for the pickups, tremolo, and strings for this guitar, which is a guitar that my dad spent only about $270 on. Now, in my opinion, a great playing, great looking, affordable guitar is the perfect guitar to invest in with upgrades. Like, let's be honest here. I'm never going to be able to afford a real star player. <laughs> Come on, man. But this guitar is still pretty dope, right? It's completely unique in my collection. It's definitely going to be bumping other guitars out of the rotation. If you're wondering, it went from sounding like this... to sounding and playing like this. subjective but for me for what I'm looking for that's a million times better getting a new guitar is a great feeling and often a new axe inspires you to play more create new music and fall in love with guitar all over again that entire experience will be even better after you've made sure that your new guitar is completely your own like we've talked about today hopefully this video will give you some ideas for what to do the next time you get a new guitar. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed so you can watch more videos like this. And until next time, don't be a jerk.